Hello guys, welcome to this new Python interview problem instruction video. And in this problem, we will actually discuss the largest contiguous subarray. Right, this is a very common problem. You might have heard of it before. And um, basically, you're given an array of n numbers and you need to find the subarray with the largest sum. So if you look here in this first example, it would just be the element eight. And in the second example, it would be the combination of the first three elements, basically the one, the one, and the seven. And we basically have to write a solution or find an algorithm which can give us the maximum subarray. But before we're going to do this, I would like to discuss how many subarrays there actually are if we are given an array of size n. And so an intuitive argument you could basically pose is you could say, well, we have one array of size n, but because it's just the array that's given to us. And if we remove one element, then we have two arrays of size n minus one. And we will have three arrays of size two, right? And this will continue until we have n arrays of size one, right? So if you didn't try to count how many subarrays there are, then this would basically be the sum of the natural numbers from one to n. And there's a convenient analytical trick we can apply, and that's equal to n times n plus one over two. So it would be in the order of n squared, different subarrays for an array of length n. And in this video, I will actually discuss a solution method with a uh, quadratic time complexity, basically a brute force method. We will basically iterate over all possible subarrays and then keep track of the maximum. Oh. So let's start writing the function. So essentially I've written both of these like test cases below already. So I will use that name. So we will define the function known as brute largest subarray and the input will be an array. And so if you want to uh, find all of the subarrays, we want to find the maximum. So let's define that the current max sum. And I'll just set that equal to, let's just do the float value of minus infinity. And so basic, basically this is just a way of saying we want the max sum to currently just be the most negative number we can find. So the smallest number that we can find. Um, and so now let's iterate over the array. So we will basically have to do this twice. Why? Because if we want to find all subarrays, then we need to move with essentially two pointers. And while keeping one pointer fixed, we need to increase the other pointer. Um, so basically, let's now write uh, what we're going to check. We're going to check whether every time we add a new element, so I'm going to call a variable known as temp sum, which is basically just a temporary sum. Uh, we're going to check whether that temp sum, the temporary sum of the elements is actually larger than our current max sum. So basically, if we find a new subarray with a higher sum than the current maximum sum, we just update the maximum sum. And we also have to make sure that every time we're done, we reset the temporary sum. And this would basically be it. So after we are done iterating through the array, we can just return the max sum. So uh, I guess you can see from the implementation that this is indeed a time complexity uh, O of n squared, because we are loping over the array two times. But I do notice something odd here. We're iterating over i. Yes, we should iterate from i to the end. So basically, if you think about it, we fix one index, and then we keep moving on from that index until we're at the end, and then we move the index one up, and we keep moving essentially until we have had all possible combinations. Um, so we could basically test to see whether this solution actually works. So I'm just going to run this. And as we can see, the solution returns for the first test case eight and for the next test case, the second test, test case, it returns nine. So it works just fine. 
Um, however, the question is, is this the best we can do, right? This like polynomial time complexity, it's not really great. Like, it's not really, it's not exponential at least, but it's not that good. And in the next video, I'll show you how you can actually achieve linear complexity using an algorithm known as Gadain's algorithm. See you then.